Welcome to Engineering Scale Models Presents, and this is going to be talking about my electronics project for scale modeling, and I have thought about this, it's been about three weeks since I started thinking of the perfect project to incorporate some electronics, some microcontrollers, into a scale modeling project, and I have come up with multiple different ideas whether it's taking some landing lights on an aircraft or making a propeller spin with a motor or a servo to orient some flaps and things like that or working on a tank to move the turret or some lights on it or things like that but I, I come up with a way that a lot of people when they build their projects they put them in a diorama or a vignette or whatnot. So I've come up with a cool little project idea that's going to incorporate a very simple use of a microcontroller that over a course of time we're going to step it up and make it um, do more things and make it more complex. And how I plan on doing this is with a some a traffic light system. So we would have a four-way intersection here like this four-way intersection like this here this would be north south east and west and then we would have a traffic light here is that supposed to be a traffic light and it would be facing in the north direction then we'd have a traffic light facing in the east direction the south direction and the west direction and we would run these traffic lights pardon my drawing I am not the best drawler this, this drawing pad is new I'm hoping to get better with it over time but I'm hoping that we can follow along with the drawing pad. So we have the traffic lights. We'll have a red LED, a yellow, yellow LED, and a green LED on each of the four traffic lights. And while the north and south are green, so why north and south are green or yellow, or yellow east and west will be red and then vice versa when east and west are green or yellow um, north and south will be red and then to eliminate issues where it instantly turns red to green while the other ones turning red I'm going to add a small delay of all red so we'll do a two second all red at end of cycle at end. So that would be how we do it here. I've, I've come up with some different ways of doing it and I was going to make the cycle adjustable with a potentiometer that is a variable resistor. Schematic version looks like this. So that's that. I'll show you what it looks like on the overhead camera. So, there's the drawings. And then this is what the potentiometer looks like. It is a variable resistor that we can turn. And in turn, turning this will adjust the cycle delay. So, it, they would stay green longer as you turn it one way. And then they would stay green less. Um, the cycle between the color changes would be less as you turn it down. So, and we'll go over all that, but to do most of this, we are going to use a microcontroller, and we are going to be using an Adreno Uno for the basic setup of this. This is going to be a basic setup. Um, it'll be a large version that tests all the circuits before moving on to more tiny surface mount LEDs and building the actual model and then we'll be converting um, the actual unit to a Adreno Nano which is um, very small. It, it 
basically just consists of this chip right here, and then you actually solder your wires onto the pins and whatnot. So let's go over this Adreno here. This is a microcontroller. It plugs into your computer through this um, USB port. It's the same kind of cord as a printer. You can also have external power, and you download the code to it from an Adreno IDE program. And that looks like this. This is a sketch program. I'll go over how to program these. We're going to start off very simple and then we'll move on to more complicated stuff and I'll go over what more items we're going to add to this at a later date. So, I'll go back to the overhead here. Um, these are the different pins. You have a power section, you have an analog input section, and then you have a digital output section and you have some serial um, transmission and things like that. But by hooking things up to the digital pins, you can control things like LEDs, um, motors, servos, um, different sensors, and things like that. And then on the analog side, you can take a reading from the potentiometer, and then you can do some math equations in the software to convert that to a time delay to work the lights and be able to adjust the lights back and forth. Now, I'll be building the circuit on this, this breadboard unit. I like this because it gives me access to two different Adrenos, a Mega and an Uno, and that way I can have multiple programs running. And it just, for prototyping, this works better for me in case I want to compare two programs. I can have one loaded up in each Adreno and just do that. So I'm going to be using this. I also have other units that I can use. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take some LEDs. We're going to take some red LEDs here. We have red. And we're going to stick them on here like so. And then we're going to put our green. And I'll go over how these components work when we go to use them. And we're going to stick those like that. And then we're going to have three more sets of these. We're going to have another set down here. A set over here facing this way set facing this way and then that way we can have this cycle and this cycle on the same and this one and this one in parallel so that way we'll actually see how the intersection would work so if this whole line was green you could drive this way but while that was green and yellow this section would be red going this way so that's the basic part of it we're going to need the LEDs so we're going to need four of each color LED each LED is going to need a resistor. The resistor is um, it's a current limiting resistor. It has different stripes on it. This is a 220 ohm resistor, which is red, red, brown. So that's 2, 2, and then 1, 0 for the brown. So we'll be using these resistors, and then we'll be connecting the potentiometer in, say, this orientation or flip it around. basic overview of what the circuit's going to look like in the beginning. Later, we're going to add some other things to this. So let me go back to the pad here. So let's, let's go down here. Find my mouse. And we're going to move this out of the way. So we're going to come back in here. We're going to draw our, our road again here. And I'll talk about So later, we're going to add a turn signal. So this middle section here would have a turning lane that would turn this way and a turning lane that would turn this way. So that would adjust the cycle 
later on we would have that and then in future iterations we'll extend this road here add that there and we will add a railroad crosswalk railroad with a servo a servo motor here connected to an arm that goes up and down and adjusts the lights appropriately to do a train passage going this way so when the train is going this way this would all be red but these could still be green but you'd have to limit the turning on red over here on on this way and block off the lanes of traffic so that is there's more just gotta get my notes here we are going to do an emergency system where we will have a button here that when the button is pressed and held down all the lights will turn red and then when the button is released so when the button is pressed pressed all red and then there will be a then a 10 second second delay before it goes back before it goes back into the cycle and this would be in case there is a emergency um, fire trucks or ambulances or police department that need to get to the intersection so we'd incorporate a button for that so and then um, later on we can add crosswalks so we have a little crosswalk here and then we can add a button according to the crosswalk that allows the crosswalk to be accessed so we could do a crosswalk system crosswalk so if you want to have a crosswalk you can even make little signs and light them up on when to walk so then we have the railroad sign or the railroad crossing and then we have the fire truck fire truck mode mode and we have the turn lanes turn lanes now for ease of the size of the project I'm only going to have turn lanes um, one or two turn lanes um, what's shown here I'm not going to have four sets of turn lanes because the project would get uh, way too large turn lanes and then we could have a day and night cycle day and night cycle so you know if it's nighttime we could have some street lights come on maybe some of them flicker things like that and it looks like day and three and night it's day and night and then we could have say the cycle is way shorter or you know this lane of traffic right here gets more traffic so this one stays green most of the time and then this one stays red and we could add a motion sensor that if a car pulls up it'll cycle for this one to be green or things like that so there are a lot of different options that we could do we could do a power outage mode where the lights all blink red so everybody knows it's a four-way stop we can use some motion sensors, some sound sensors, some uh, microphone sensors. And then um, for what I want to do at the end, which I think would be pretty cool, is to put a little policeman in the center on a servo, and he can direct traffic if the intersection has an accident. So there's a lot of different options that we can move into from this basic set of circuits and this basic Adreno program that we're going to start out with in um, this in future videos. So I think that's all of my notes on what to cover. Um, I just want to cover on here. Let's move this here again. Let's move this and we're going to talk about the cycle um, for the base cycle with the potentiometer um, it's going to be set at the zero setting it's going to be green for 10 seconds yellow 
for three seconds and then red for 15 seconds and that is it'll be red due to the fact that it's 13 seconds for the green and yellow plus the two second delay so that gets us to 15 seconds so it's a 28 second cycle and then on the max side of the potentiometer which is actually 1023 based on how the analog works but we'll get into that the green will be a hundred seconds hundred seconds yellow will still be three seconds you don't need the yellow any longer but it will be able to be changed if you want it yellow all these variables can be changed and then the red would be a hundred and five seconds red would be a hundred and five seconds so that would be your hundred seconds plus your three seconds of yellow and then your two seconds of delay for a total of 208 seconds long per cycle and then we can have the different cycle interrupts and things like that later in the the project so I am going to pause here um, that is a basic overview basic look at the simple parts I am going to pause here I'm going to get everything together and then we're going to continue this and we're going to start looking at how we're going to set it up on the breadboard and talk about the components in a little bit more detail so I'll be back in a bit okay let's talk a little bit of how a circuit works let's take for example a 9 volt battery in a schematic a power supply looks like this and then it comes out and you have a positive and a negative now this is going to sound confusing but the electrons actually move from negative to positive but we perceive current as moving from positive to negative so if I come to the overhead and this camera and turn it on you can see that I have my voltmeter set up to measure DC voltage and the glare is awful I know but I have a 9 volt battery here and if I put the black the negative and the red to the positive I will read a voltage of 9 volts a little bit over 9.5 volts we'll check another one here there we go and we have three good batteries now what does that have to do with anything I will show you because I am going to demonstrate some techniques of stuff on this breadboard and on this breadboard I have a power supply unit that I can plug a 9 volt battery into and it will give me 5 volts on both sides of my rails now when you look at this if you look at my rails here all these here are connected so all this whole blue line is negative this whole red line is positive 5 volts and then these in a straight line on this side are connected these in a straight line are this side connected they are not connected next to each other so what are we going to do we are going to connect up some LEDs and I'm going to show you how an LED circuit works and things like that so let me get my jumpers out here so I have some jumper cables some jumper cables and I have some LEDs and some resistors now if you have an LED we'll take for example this red LED it has a long lead the anode and a short lead the cathode and I refer to this as Anne has COVID so she's positive and cat doesn't have COVID so she's negative so that's that and then if you use a resistor you need a I mean an LED you need a current limiting resistor and for about 5 volts 
I will use a 220 ohm resistor but what is it is red red brown sorry red red brown so that's 220 ohms and if we are unsure about that we can switch our meter to ohms and we can switch our meter to ohms and we can test it it doesn't matter polarity on this and we have a resistance of 220 floating you know around 220 ohms it's not going to be exact because there's tolerances in resistors plus I have my fingers touching the lead so it's going to be a little bit off but roughly 220 and we're going to plug the resistor into the positive rail and plug it into row 10 here like so and then we're going to take our LED and use a different LED. I'm going to use a different LED because that's one from my... I'm going to get one with a longer... This is just a square one with longer leads. I'm going to spread the leads a little bit. I'm going to take the longer one and I'm going to plug it into the positive rail, the resistor. And I'm going to plug it into the circuit like that. Now what's nice about these little boards powering my breadboard, make sure it's off, I can take my little 9 volt to 5 mil adapter here, and then I can just plug it in here, and I can turn my light on. As you can see the light is on, turn the LED off, so I now have a voltage onto that LED and if I want to see what that voltage is across that LED I can just come in here with my meter and I can put this to the positive which is here and this to the negative and I'm dropping about two volts across that LED so and then across the resistor I am dropping about 2.9 so 2 volts plus 3 volts is 5 volts so I have a complete circuit all the voltage is being dropped we'll just check to make sure it's exactly 5 volts oh, it's not gonna let me check that so um, I, think I can check it here so 5 volts basically checking some reference pins on this box so I got 5 volts so it, this has a um, circuit in it that drops steps down the voltage so that I can run off a 9 volt battery you can also run your Arduino off a 9 volt battery um, if you have a simple enough code you can run it off of there so that's basically how an LED works and how we're going to use the LEDs in the circuits now with the Adreno you can make the LED turn on and off at a certain amount of time, you can make it blink, you can make it dim, fade, and all that stuff. But for our project we're going to be turning it on and off. So like I said, that is the basics of an LED. If you want to get uh, real creative, you can solder your resistor right to the positive of the LED like so and then you can just plug it in like so okay I, I soldered it to the negative my bad well, it's been a while since I've used these but I can see I plugged that into the negative and the positive and I light my LED so these little simpler ways of doing it come in handy and you may do something similar on the actual traffic light project so that is basically lighting an LED um, I have multiple I'll be switching between prototyping boards just so I can have things set up and taken down rather easily so I'm going to switch back to the overhead and I want to show you what I have here so this is what I have set up for the traffic lights. I only have two sets of lights. This would be going north-south and this over here would be going east-west. 
So how it would work is while this set of lights is either green or yellow, this will be red. And vice versa, if this is green and yellow, this one will be red. And then they will both be red for a period of one to two seconds at, at the same time to avoid any kind of traffic issues. I'm using six pins on the Adreno. Um, one, I'm using pins 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And we will start to write a program explaining how this works. First we're going to start with lighting up each of the pins and then we'll start defining things like that. But first let me show you how this circuit is going to work. So I already have my power supply so on the positive side I have a resistor and that's the symbol for resistor. Then I have an LED light emitting diode little light emitting diode symbol and I have this times six okay so there are six there is a green green there's two greens times two there's a red times two and a yellow times two and they are all connected to a pin of the Adreno so this is this is the okay that didn't change colors this is the AUD Adreno pin. So say this is pin 6. Pin 6 and that would be what represents the power supply. And we would write a program in the Adreno IDE to um, signify pin 6 would be connected to this and we could turn it on and off as we see fit. So let's take a look at the software side of things. So here is what the software looks like. I'm just going to get over to the screen it's on. And now this is a simple code here that I wrote just messing around that flashes the LED that is on the that is built on the Adreno here. So I will show you on make sure pin 13 is connected to an LED. Yeah, it is. So if uh, no, that's not. Let's just stick with this one. So if I plug in to if I plug into this Adreno, I'll unplug these pins for right now. If I plug into this Adreno here, and I will zoom in so you can see just the Adreno. Okay, so I'll turn this off. And you see that this LED right here, this LED is blinking. And I do that because that LED is connected to pin 13. And I have identified a variable, which is like a suitcase that I'm putting the number 13 into, which is the pin number. Then I have a certain amount of time to turn it on and off. So an on time and off time, that's in milliseconds. And then I am setting the pin mode, so I'm letting the Adreno know I want to use pin 13, which is the LED, as an output. So that means it's going to output a signal to pin 13. And then <coughs> down here, in the, and that was in the setup, <coughs> excuse me, and down here in the void loop, I am digital writing the LED, which is pin 13 to a high output which is high which is 5 volts and I am doing that for a period of 500 milliseconds then I am writing the LED low which is off and I'm doing that for 500 milliseconds and then it is re 
going through the program again on off on off and if I want to change it to on for a full second so 1000 1000 and off for 1000 I can do that right there and I can upload this code saving And we are waiting here. Okay. Okay, let us go to new. Let us do a new one and we will demonstrate this without the variables we will come in here and we will put in uh, pin mode so we got pin mode and we will do pin 13 and we were going to make it in output caps matter out out Output it turns blue in parentheses semicolon then if we come down here to the void loop and we do D I G I T A L right capital W digital right and then we say our conditions which would be pin 13 and we want to write it to 5 volts which is high all caps in the condition with the close bracket and semicolon and then we need a delay which is the delay feature and then we'll just put in 1000 and we will close that semicolon that and then we will digital write right pin 13 low all capitals low and then we will delay again 1000 and uh, semicolon okay so that should be all we need to do this and let's uh, let's check to make sure our board is hooked up we are hooked up to an Adrena Uno okay we are hooked up we are connected and let's try to upload it. We will save it. And let's see if it works this time. Sometimes they give you issues. It is compiling the sketch. I'll show you where it says it's compiling. So it's showing right down here in the corner. It's compiling. And we will go back to this one. Nope, not that one. This one. And now you can see the LED is blinking one time a second, or one time to every two seconds. So it's on for a second, off for a second. And then you can change any of these variables to do anything you would like to do. Okay, so that's that. Let us go back to the overhead and I'm going to talk about what our circuit is doing. Now, our circuit, I'll unplug that. Our circuit here has three LEDs and three LEDs. So we will connect these. So the brown pin is the green LED, which is 11. And then the red pin is the yellow, which is 10. And the orange is the red. Is that right? Red. So that goes in pin 9. And then 
we are going to plug these in the green is going to be pin 6 the yellow the yellow is pin 5 and the red the red is going to be pin 3 and I have them all on pulse width modulation pins just so I can edit the program and show you some other stuff later so as you can see I'm using 3, 5, 6 for the first set and 9, 10, 11 for the next set so um, we're gonna say this is the north set of lights and this is the east set of lights so we need to go back to our program here and we need to edit our program so let us do that let's come in here and we will set up some global variables okay so if you have a variable that does not change like a pinned location you can set it as a constant C O N S T integer oh, I have to turn my meter off constant integer and the integer we have the name of the variable so this is going to be north red L E D so it's the north traffic light and it's the red LED and that is going to be equal to pin 3 that is pin 3 so that is always going to be the north red LED is going to be pin 3 so if we want to light the north red LED we're going to say it's going to tell it it's at pin 3 so we're going to do the same thing constant integer and then we're going to do the north north yellow LED is going to be pin pin 5 pin 5 and then we have constant integer so integer is a real is a whole number it's not any decimal places we have north green led now caps is very important on this because when you call the variable you have to make sure that you you do that and i forgot semicolons on the end of all these lines so and then it is always good to put comments in your in your program so i'm going to come down here a little bit and I'm going to make a comment with two forward slashes and say this this is my TRA traffic light program V1 so this is my traffic light program version 1 so that's that so and then let's finish doing these now let's do the east side lights so we can actually come here and do this and say this is the north so the north road light pin locations so that's what we could do with that and then we could come down here and we could do this and say east road light locations so and then we can set these variables constant integer and then we have east red LED that is going to be equal to 
and the east red LED just to check to make sure is the orange wire is the orange wire and the orange is pin 9 and we got our semicolon now the double slash lines they aren't read by the code so they don't need semicolons or anything so let's do constant integer and we have east yellow yellow t that is going to be pin 10 semicolon and So this is a type of bumpy text with the capitals at the beginning of the words. So equals 11. So we have our pins defined. Now we're going to need some other variables. So we're going to need some on off times for the different colors. And we're going to need some functions for cycles and stuff. But right now, I'm just going to put a standard delay time. So let's do delay times. And then we'll do in integer, because we may change this one. And then we'll do on equals 1,000. So and then we'll do another one off equals 1000 and that's in milliseconds so that is one second so now we have three sets of variables we have our north LED variables our east LED variables and then we have some delay times so now I need to come down here and I need to set some pin modes now I could do a nifty function that does these pin modes but I'm just going to go through them here so the first pin mode is going to be the north red LED. So I'm going to type in north red LED. So there it is. It's an output. Okay. It's not one north red LED. It's just north red LED. Okay, so... So I'm going to come over here. And then I'm going to and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in a comment setting my pen modes. So that's what I'm doing here. And I like to on a line of code I like to indent it to show what's going on. So I'm going to do another pin mode, and then we're going to do our condition, and this is going to be north, oops, it's yellow first. doesn't matter the order, but I like to, I'm not the best fastest typer, I'm sorry about that guys. make a lot of mistakes especially with the capitals it's been about a year since I've picked up anything Arduino so and then we got pin mode okay so I'm gonna come back when I get all these pin modes entered and then we'll do the next part of this coding Okay, I'm back, and I went ahead and wrote the code, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, this is just basically a simple cycle. We are going to make it um, do more things in um, future episodes, but I'm going to wrap this one up with this. I have the cycle going. It's working. So just a brief overview. I set the pin locations for each of the LEDs. I set three different wait times, a cycle time, a yellow time, and a red time where they're all going to be red. And then I labeled my pin modes here. 
and then I did the first cycle running with the north light being green so it is uh, green while the other one is red and then it goes to the yellow light on the north side and then it goes into all lights being red and then it switches the cycle so I'm going to switch to the overhead here and I want to show you how this is working so as you can see turn this off here see the lights better so you can see it's red and that's green this side's still red so traffic can go on this side but this side it cannot it's going to turn yellow that's going to turn red and then now this side's got green traffic to go now if we go back to the program here um, if you look in the program these delay times I put up here under delay times I have the cycle time where it's green for five seconds and it's uh, yellow for a second and a half and then it's all red for a second I can come in here and I can change these variables to make the cycle time anything I want to make it and eventually we're going to leave these blank and we're going to be getting a cycle time through a potentiometer and a math equation so we're going to be turning this to increase the cycle time of the green LED on each side but this is it for the first part of this traffic light video um, as you can see this is how this is going to work for the four lights we would just hook up another set in parallel one in parallel with this one one in parallel in this one and we would have four operating traffic lights that is going to be it for this one if you like this video and you're looking to see more make sure you subscribe hit that like button leave a comment asking any questions um, I know I kind of glanced over the code it's easier for me to type it in and then go over it and show it to you and then we're going to be putting this in functions and stuff later like that you can visit me on social media at these locations links are also in the descriptions and you can also visit me on patreon where I'm going to post schematics and whatnot. Thank you so much.